So I've been given the job of setting some kind of context uh, for today and today's discussion and sort of where we're, where we're at. Um, some of you would have been here five years ago, five years ago, uh, for a similar event um, when we first started doing the work that would become uh, Aratoi or Te Pōti, and I'd like to acknowledge uh, all of our friends from Transforming Dunedin for their uh, mahi in, in that process, that lengthy process, uh, signing off um, our, the last of the policy work this year, uh, five years later, which I say um, just to, as a note of caution that if anybody expects anything to happen quickly, they may be um, disappointed, but they do, <laughs> these things do happen. Um, so uh, Aratoi Otopoti is a, it's a city strategy, it's not a, it's not a council strategy. And we developed with um, Transforming Dunedin and, and our creative community. It was um, a, a quite an interesting process. Um, it, was a, it was a new way of working for council, which traditionally doesn't do that kind of thing particularly well, but we are getting better at it, I think. It's a system of continuous improvement um, in terms of handing over um, the role of policy development and strategy development um, in, by partnering with the community in the way that we did. Um, it, it began uh, with a symposium here at the School of Art in 2012 uh, and was formally launched in October 2015 and there are four key themes uh, in the strategy work. Um, identity, pride, access and inclusion, uh, inspired connections uh, and the creative economy. Um, there are 12 initial actions that sit under that, uh, some are led by the council and others uh, for the whole city. Uh, what the council have done, we hired uh, extra staff uh, to be able to deliver that work. Um, Craig Monk as an arts advisor and Anthony Deeker an economic development unit um, to guide and advise uh, on the street and then um, uh, to, do the, to do that work from a, from a staff perspective. Uh, and then we got a group together called the Creative Dunedin Partnership which, uh, which I chair um, that guides and advises uh, on the strategy and includes uh, representation from uh, our local Runaka, uh, the University, the Polytechnic, Transforming Dunedin, the Arts, Social and Health sectors. Um, the DCC projects that support the, uh, the initial actions identified in the strategy, uh, I'll run off a list. Um, we've finally, ACAN, finally signed off on uh, a public art framework which will be uh, a guiding document for a more ambitious uh, approach to um, public art than we have seen since, uh, well, since the money got stripped out of the budget, frankly, in 2010. Uh, but now it's back, and now we have a plan for how we can best invest that. Uh, that's, um, that's a boiler point which you may not be able to access at the moment. There's some fairly serious um, pile driving going on uh, as they extend the wharf there, um, but more things uh, that look like that. Um, we adopted this year the Arts and Creativity and Infrastructure Policy, which uh, doesn't sound particularly exciting, but is. Um, and basically that means that anything that council builds above ground, um, we won't, it won't be ugly. Um, <laughs> and this is, I'm not in charge of the timing. Um, and, and, we'll, and so all of our infrastructure projects will work with um, creatives, uh, whether they're artists or designers, and putting that stuff together. Uh, and we'll, we'll, talk, we'll hear more about this. This is the South Dunedin community pop-up. Uh, on Hillside Road, um, which Aroha Novak was involved in, and she's speaking on that uh, later on. Um, we have a program f for empty space activations, which is a fancy way of putting, of saying we put art in empty shops. Um, that's not one of them, that's a full, um, <laughs> that is. Uh, that's, um, that's a, a pro that's a, that was Sunroom, um, which involved direct and digital sun transfer between the southern and northern hemispheres. Don't ask me how that worked, but it did. Um, so that's, uh, so we have a local branch of the Urban Dream Brokerage, um, which is a project that started in Wellington. Uh, we support the Dunedin Boosted Ambassador, which is um, really important in terms of helping artists um, generate money for their projects. That's the inimitable Uncle Shane Carter, who some of you will have heard read from his forthcoming memoir uh, at the DPAG earlier this week. Um, got a bunch of money for, um, for his solo piano album uh, through the Boosted platform. Uh, we run a, a program called Bring It Home Dunedin, uh, which provides extra money for people who are making music videos uh, in the city, or Dunedin musicians making music videos. That's French for Rabbits, I think, shot in the Savoy. Um, we hold a, a funding hui called Joy and Jeopardy, which is about connecting um, artists to people who give them money for doing what they do. Um, and it's perfectly titled um, for anybody who tries to make a living in doing this kind of work. 
and we coordinated uh, the China Film Festival in Dunedin and we sent dozens of work, dozens of works by jewelers, artists, sculptors, fashion designers uh, to Shanghai for an exhibition called Anything Could Happen in the Yuan Garden, which they gave us the space for free. That's uh, the busiest tourist spot in Shanghai. Um, and we're incredibly lucky to be given it and um, they helped push that and that's all very exciting. Uh, and what else? With the Otago Community Trust, uh, we've recently set up a fund to help local arts groups develop capacity in their, um, well, wherever they need, really. It's, some of them have been digital platforms, some of them have been strategic planning, some of them have been fundraising, um, in terms of just, because when, I mean, when you're trying to survive on a day-to-day -day basis or a year-to-year -year basis, dreading the 30th of June, or well, the 31st of March, um, it's hard sometimes to find the capacity to help plan for the longer term. So um, what we're trying to do is, is help make that easier uh, for, uh, for people. Uh, of course, we wouldn't be here um, over the course of this week or the, um, if it weren't for the City of Literature. Um, and so that's become a, a fairly key project in terms of how we deliver or capitalise uh, on the, the strategic priorities within uh, Aratoi or Tapoti. Um, collaborations with the Dunedin Writers and Readers Festival, uh, the New Zealand Young Writers Festival. Uh, there's a digital cookbook that worked across the D Creative Cities Network, pairing cities of food and cities of writing. Uh, we had a stand at the Bologna Children's Book Fair, uh, and we're doing, as I said, uh, hosting this, uh, this Creative Cities Southern Hui. Um, and some of it is just celebrating business as usual, really. We're incredibly lucky as a city to have um, very good art and cultural institutions who continue to deliver uh, fantastic programs. Uh, the Otago Museum co-presented work uh, by Daniel Belton and Gabby O'Connor uh, at Toitu Otago Settlers Museum. The Slice of Life exhibition uh, on the Dunedin study became their, most, uh, their biggest exhibition ever. They had 227,000 people uh, go through that, which was quite, uh, quite phenomenal. Uh, the Dunedin Public Library, as I said, delivered uh, the pilot for our art and infrastructure program out in South Dunedin. Uh, and its events program included events like Around the World and 80 Tales, a uh, storytelling event that you'll hear more about, and the Nook and Cranny Music Festival. Um, so, yeah, so it's, um, and it hasn't, hmm, it's a, it, is a, it is a work in progress in terms of how we can um, enable uh, and empower people to take um, to take this by the scruff of the neck and make it do what they want it to do rather than uh, wait for council to do things. As I said, that's not a good strategy. Um, so th we're trying to foster a, a community approach and a collaborative approach as much as we can. Um, the DCC Creative Dunedin uh, Partnership and other funders uh, like Creative New Zealand, who hopefully will be out of the wilderness that they've been um, suffering um, under the last over the last decade or so, uh, and the Otago Community Trust um, working to enable and support a huge range of community arts, business, and institutional uh, activities.